Is there one key event that you're watching that you think is going to have the biggest impact on the year ahead? Well, it's going to be the ECB um, very clearly. So we're going to be watching when the ECB will really start cutting interest rates. And what we're currently seeing is that the ECB is not there yet. We've reached the peak um, rates, but it's going to take, in my view, at least until June before we will get the first rate cut. But this will clearly be a crucial moment for the Eurozone economy, which in the first part of this year will be rather sluggish and maybe even stay in a recession. All right, so talk me through this, Karsten. You're saying that you believe the beginning of the year is going to be pretty sluggish, but um, Germany did a great job laying this out. The German DAX and the Italian FTSE MIB, they're both on pace for their best years. Or they're going to probably finish on the, for the, their best year since the pandemic. What changes as we turn the page on the calendar? When we look at the stock markets, it is remarkable indeed, because this, this looks as if the European countries had grown in 2023 by, I don't know, 2 or 3 percent. But this is not true. We will see that the German economy in 23 will end up in recession. The Eurozone economy as a whole will probably have grown by... Uh, 0.5%. So when I look into 2024, I, I see the uh, delayed impact from the ECB's monetary policy tightening in 22 and 23, which will weigh on investments, which will weigh on consumption. So I think that the first half of next year will clearly be this reality check also for investors when the European economy will not be able to make up or uh, to fulfill the dreams that investors currently have. So the first half of next year will still be a very tough one. And then come interest rate cuts by the ECB, come okay. probably also a recovery of the U.S. economy, we will see a recovery of the European economy. All right, you're talking about reality checks. The reality is there are a lot of geopolitical tensions, including the war in Ukraine, the Israel-Hamas war. How do you see those potentially impacting those European markets? Well, of course, there's always an escalation um, possible, a uh, clean escalation of the war in Ukraine would have a negative impact on, on markets in, in the Eurozone. Same way you look at the, uh, the, uh, the, the Gaza conflict and the Gaza war, if this was to escalate further, be it with an impact on energy, um, be it on involvement of Iran, this would also be a negative um, factor for the European economy. I think the only upside I can see from these geopolitical conflicts is that they would end. Um, that one of these two or even both uh, military conflicts would end in 2024. And this could then actually even give a boost to European markets. Just think of uh, the reconstruction that will be needed for Ukraine. So this would clearly also give a boost to European markets. All right. So you mentioned a possible escalation, but just hypothetically, uh, because you do believe that these two conflicts have a big impact on the Eurozone and uh, the, the indices there. If we see, see if we continue to see things stay the same, how do you see that impacting markets in Europe? I think if if things remain the same, um, they will not matter that much for markets, and then markets will really turn to monetary policy and to actually growth numbers. Um, I think when you also look at what the ECB, for example, is predicting, what we heard before, that the ECB sees the European economy returning to growth by mid next year. It is mainly driven by private consumption, according to the ECB. I would be a bit more cautious. So I would really watch private consumption. Will higher wage growth, will a drop in inflation really push right. up private consumption? Or could we see precautionary savings holding back consumption? You know, here in the US, we often have guests say it's a stock picker's market. You just can't invest broadly in this current environment. When it comes to the Eurozone, can you can you put your money perhaps just in the DAX and play it broadly, or is it a very similar situation where you need to look at particular stocks and particular sectors? I think, you know, Europe is in a transitional phase, like like we heard before, so I really need to, to really stock pick the sectors. What will be the sectors that will thrive, even in macroeconomic backdrop of stagnation, it will be everything related to energy um, energy transition to sustainability. Um, so these sectors will clearly thrive. We will have the other sectors um, that uh, that will be more prone to uh, to the transition. That is uh, automotives. That is probably also chemicals, um, which is will be retail. So these are the sectors that I would be thinking that they would be not that good in 2024. So you really have to pick the stocks, the sectors that could benefit from all the structural challenges, changes that are ongoing in the European economy.